I have my iPad handy. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Ray Simone. If you didn't know, now you know and you'll never forget. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about how I gained weight in my weight gain journey and just some tips and tricks that I have in order for somebody to gain weight. And this is more for people who struggle with gaining weight. We're told that they have high metabolism, played sports, just didn't gain weight easily but want to. Because this is how I was. I played sports. I was very skinny at a time and I thought I could never gain weight because I've tried and it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of trials and tribulations in order to get where I am now. I actually weighed myself yesterday and I was 167 and this was around the middle of the day so right before dinner but like after breakfast. Like I say the medium, the mean of what I usually am, you know, it can vary but I was 167. So before the summer really started or the beginning of the summer, I was 130 and now I'm 167. You do the math. That's a lot of weight for somebody who can't gain weight. I'm going to get into it, but just know anybody can gain weight. Trust me, believe me. Just like people be saying it's possible to lose weight. I agree with that because we're going to get into my story. I've been on both sides. I've been on both sides and I feel like this is where I've been most confident, but yeah so let's get into the story i'm first talking to the people who have a lot to say about other people's body choices how they look maybe it's not their choice but people's appearances and how people speak on other people's bodies this is for you stop telling people to be confident in themselves that they're beautiful no matter how they look that they shouldn't care what other people think easier said than done okay everybody knows these cliche sayings anybody who's struggling with body dysmorphia or body image they know these sayings but it's easier said than done so it's better to keep your opinions and your advice to yourself unless they ask you for advice period did i ask right did we ask no we didn't ask we don't want that advice unless we ask respectfully everybody on me I'm first going to start with getting into some of the psychology behind this. I am actually a psychology major, so you know I have to touch on this first. First and foremost, I learned this in my psych class for abnormal psychology. So we're learning about eating disorders and things of that nature. So he told us, my professor actually told us, and this is like last month, that if you started dieting or trying to lose weight, you're more prone in adulthood to have body dysmorphia and body image problems. Not eating disorders though. So you're not prone to have eating disorders. That's actually very rare if you started dieting. They're not correlated. So just keeping that in mind. Now we're going to get into my story, which starts at around 10, 11 years old. As a child, I guess before that, I was a very picky eater. So I wouldn't like to eat meat. I would eat certain meat. I would eat fake meat like chicken nuggets, frozen chicken nuggets, hot dogs, Kraft mac and cheese. We didn't really eat out. When I was younger, my mom didn't really get us, or she didn't get us fast food, unless it was like literally a random day and no correlation, no nothing. We didn't eat out. We didn't really go to restaurants that often. We did sometimes actually, probably every other month we would go out to eat at a restaurant. And I also lived in an ingredient household, which if you don't know what that is, I'm going to put the definition here. But basically an ingredient household is when there's a lot of ingredients in the house, not really full meals that you can just eat, but you would have to make your own meal. So it would be peanut butter, there would be jelly, there would be crackers, there would be cheese. You, I would eat cheese sandwiches sometimes, just cut the cheese and then just take some crackers, yum. Um, grilled cheese, you know, there's butter, there's stuff to make it, but you need to make it. It's not really the meals are already prepped. There's spaghetti, which is, I think, bigger than an ingredient household, but yeah, it's an ingredient household. No snacks for real. Probably gummies, goldfish. I'm going to insert some pictures as well throughout the video. When I was younger, I was definitely overweight, according to my doctors, being my chart. I was in the yellow. I wasn't obese, but I was in the yellow. I was overweight, and... People at my school definitely did say I was fat. You know, like those boys that were really grimy, they would definitely say that. And I don't know if I had a toll on me, but I guess it did because when I was 11, that's when I started changing my diets, going more into diet culture. Basically, I started to go on this all water diet. So I wouldn't drink, I would still eat food, but I wouldn't drink anything other than water. It had to be ice cold water, and I would drink large amounts at a time. 
I specifically remember one time I was curled up in my bed holding my stomach. I couldn't move because I drank way too much water. So I had to wait 20 minutes in order to go to the bathroom. So it was really bad. That's when I realized, okay, I need to tone it down. But I was still on an all-water diet. And this all-water diet actually continued all throughout high school. Like, I didn't drink any juice, no soda. Soda? Oh, I wasn't even allowed to drink soda at my house. So we had juice sometimes, but I wouldn't drink it. But I, we weren't allowed to have soda. We'd never had soda in our house. And then I became an athlete too. So we're going to get into that, but... So yeah, I started playing basketball and volleyball around late middle school, 8th grade, 7th and 8th grade, and then high school, I continued to play sports. But at this time, in middle school, boys would start, instead of calling me fat, they started calling me flats, as in flats, which was insane, the fact that little boys would always talk about girls' bodies. Even, I'm sure they talked about themselves as well. Not themselves, but like other guys, but it's just crazy. Cut it out. Regardless, they would start calling me flat, and I'd be very insecure about up here. So I was insecure about that till like probably last year. But as girls, not just me, my friends too, saying you know we're flat, but our butts are big. Because this was when Kim Kardashian was starting to get a little bit more popular for having her butt, and so crazy in itself as well. But we're not we're not getting into that. Young men, boys, not even young men, young boys and boys comment on women's bodies way too much and this was like the start of my body image issues growing up so let's just teach our kids to do better like it's not cute it's not fun for anybody guys girls nobody next we're gonna get to some high school at the doctor's office i was always in the green zone right in the middle so if you're right in the middle of the green zone you look skinny to most people in America at least so they're gonna be like you're small because even though the chart is saying you're perfectly healthy just know I was small and I'm gonna have pictures but this is what in the green zone looked like for my height which I was around 5'1 5'2 in high school now I'm 5'3 and a half but I was 5'1 5'2 in like the beginning years of high school so this is what it looked like to be healthy according to the BMI chart I was 110 pounds to 120 pounds throughout my entire high school career until about my senior year near the end. But this was very consistent. So in my freshman year, I was very confident. And I feel like this was because a lot of people told me, your body looks good, basically. Not in those words exactly. I picked up on it. I was looking pretty good. I was doing sports, so the waist kind of came with the running a lot. I had that some waist. I had... A badonk. It was still like a little nothing really up here. <laughs> but you know, I was like, yeah, I look like him, basically. And that was the standard. Let me just this is my journey. These are my tips. You don't have to take everything I say. Take everything with a grain of salt. My opinions. This is just when I'm telling these stories, this is not exactly how I feel right now. This is how I was feeling in the moment. So I feel like my view on bodies is very different than how it was in high school, middle school, and etc yeah all right so i remember specifically i posted this instagram picture on the fourth of july and i had a crop top on and my abs were showing and this guy dm'd me and he was like oh you look like a man i look like a man like a man what because i have abs so i realize now many men's insecurity that's who i was i had abs y'all wanted it y'all couldn't have it y'all couldn't get it whatever but that's what it was but i didn't realize that at the time i was very insecure this is when i started to want to gain weight and this is actually when i started developing body dysmorphia so i'm gonna put the definition of it on the screen so basically i couldn't tell what my body realistically looked like when i looked in the mirror i would see everything was very exaggerated so based on how everyone else saw me and how I saw myself in the mirror, everything was very exaggerated and it was not what it actually was. So usually I would see images in the mirror of myself when I was looking in the mirror. I would see myself as other, what other people were telling me I looked like. And it would be over exaggerated. So at this time many people were saying I was very skinny. And I was skinny. Like it was actually getting unhealthy. I was very skinny when COVID hit especially. But people were telling me I looked very skinny and then I would over exaggerate in my head like I looked like a piece of paper. And it wasn't that, of course. So my senior year, this is when I really started to be intentional about my weight and trying to gain weight. Like I said, over COVID, I was very skinny. I'm going to actually insert a video of this because I watched it the other day and I was like, 
ain't no way. And this is what I actually prompted me to make this video because I posted it on my Finsta on Instagram and my friends were like, how did you gain this weight? Because this has been before they knew me and this is me in college now. They were like, how did you gain that weight? Well, my clothes would always fit very badly. Everything I felt like would fall off my waist. It just also because I just wasn't very confident in what I was wearing. I didn't know my style, my body type would fit me best. So I was very insecure in what I wore. Yes, yeah, so when I went back to school after COVID, which I only went to half of the year, my senior year, so the end half, is when I went back to school, because I just liked being at home, I started being intentional about gaining weight and really doing my research. So I started doing research. I still didn't see many results. A lot of people were telling me I need to go to the gym and lift. Well, they said I need to go to the gym. And I was not very confident in lifting at that time, so I didn't like to go to the gym or when I went I would do a lot of cardio and that wasn't helping me at all. I wanted to gain weight, but I didn't want to gain it in the areas I didn't want to gain it in. So like my waist, I didn't want to gain any weight in my stomach and my back. So I wanted to go to the gym, continue going to the gym, but also gain weight. And for me, when you're trying to lose weight in certain areas and gain weight in other areas, it's impossible. You can't lose, try to lose weight and try to gain weight. No. So you can try to build muscle and gain weight. I think that's more feasible than trying to lose weight and gain weight at the same time. So I started being more intentional and I actually focused on overeating. Now, I... <laughs> this was very dangerous. I feel like I focused on expanding my appetite. This is... Or this can be very dangerous if done the wrong way. It should be done gradually. Me, I took it to the extreme and nothing happened to me, but I would just say be more safe and do it at a more gradual rate. It's force feeding yourself. Um, I feel like people with high metabolisms don't have bigger appetites or they can uh, and they just work it off easily. But for me, I just had a small appetite. I didn't like to eat and I feel like that was the main part of why I was not getting weight. Because I was eating, but I was eating till I felt full and then, but I wasn't full enough to be at a calorie increase than what I was eating before to gain weight. I started force feeding myself at exponential rates. I needed to slow it down, but the biggest thing I ate was Chipotle. Chipotle has so many calories in their bowls. Now, I never finished a full bowl, but I started getting close to it. And I was having Chipotle three times a week, at least. And this was like crazy, especially after Christmas time when I got Chipotle gift cards, I was literally eating it all the time. So I gained about 10 pounds that year, which was amazing to me because my goal was 130. So now my next goal was 140. Now this probably took the longest time. Once I hit 140, it kind of went out the window. But getting from 130 to 140, I remember it was just so hard for me. And I don't completely understand why this happens to me. But like that was like my, I mean, even getting to 130 was like a breaking point for me. You know, 140 it just felt like it took forever. I was being intentional for such a long amount of time. My freshman year, I went to the dining hall, I went to the dining hall, I went to the dining hall, so I was, I gained a lot. I gained, I think, 10 pounds or just under 10 pounds that year. And then, I mean, that semester, the first semester, because they forced us to have a meal plan, so I might as well use my meals, right? So basically, I gained 10 pounds that first semester and then I lost it the next semester. My sophomore year, this was a little bit of a breaking point for me. So the first semester, I was so busy. I was still losing weight, you know. I was so busy, so I couldn't really eat that much, or I couldn't find the time to eat. And I also moved into an apartment where I had to cook, and I didn't really like to cook. So I would make spaghetti, and chicken, rice, chicken, ramen, grilled cheese. And then I was also broke, so I wasn't really buying food. I didn't have a meal plan, so I like had no job. It was just giving. I'm not eating, and I am losing weight. My second semester. I had basically the same diet, but I found more time to cook, so I would cook more, eat more, and like eat a lot more, eat more Chipotle, because I got a job as well, so I had so many, um, I would eat a lot with friends, because they would be cooking and I don't, so that was helping me a lot, thank y'all. And I also stopped going to the gym at this time, because I realized I wasn't very confident in lifting weights, and that's the only way I feel like you can go to the gym and continue to gain weight at least for me i was more prone to doing cardio i was more confident doing cardio because that's what we had to do for sports so i was more strong in those areas so that's what i would do i would do cardio I, my upper body not good it just was not there at all so i just didn't do it <laughs> but that's a whole different problem for a whole different day but 
yeah so i decided to stop going to the gym because all i did was cardio and i was just losing the weight and i did a lot of yoga so it helped me build my strength stamina helps me all i love doing yoga i still do yoga guys that's my workout routine right now in summertime post summertime that's when i finally broke it through i think at the end before summertime like i said i was 135 so this is when and at this time like i was fluctuating like i had i had definitely hit 140 by then i think i went to 145 went back down but it was just back and forth back and forth but at the end of the semester beginning of summertime i was 135 solid started eating a lot this is when i gained 30 pounds in three months so i started to eat four to five times a day full meals okay guys to do eating at the dining hall so it just made it easier and more accessible for me to get food to eat and to put in my system and to nourish my body and just food that wasn't empty calories this was really important for me i ate chipotle because i had a job over the summer here at school so i ate chipotle it was helping me as it has always helped me throughout my whole entire weight gaining journey i developed a sweet tooth at this time i don't know if this is a milestone but i never like to eat sweets mm -hmm. And so over the summer, I'm gonna start to really like sweets and always want a sweet after my meal. I don't know, but I started to like sweets. I started to do it more intuitive eating at this point because my appetite was expanded. So if I kept eating when I was hungry, whenever I was hungry, it would definitely help me to continue to maintain this weight. And then my junior year, which is the year I'm in now, it's crazy. I mean, here I am, 167. I also started gaining weight in my back and my face and that's something that's been really hard for me to work through but you have to understand if you want to gain weight you have to be ready for these things to happen you have to be ready to gain weight in places you don't necessarily want to gain weight and i'm a strong believer in you can gain the weight and then lose it so you can gain weight biggest parts for me were my arms my face my lower body and i'm not the only thing that i'm like oh is my face and my back a little bit i'm kind of getting over that it's more my face but you have to be prepared for that you know that's just the name of the game especially if you're eating in certain ways because i feel like a lot of face fat is from what you eat so if i'm eating chipotle a lot of protein a lot of dairy it's gonna yeah so i'm just getting over it i'm just getting used to i feel like how my face looks now and how it was before i just getting used to seeing my face like this now but it's just me i'm sure most people don't even recognize it that's my story of how i became 167 and broke some barriers for myself now i'm going to get some tips for you all i said tips around throughout the entire video but i'm just going to get some more specific tips that you all can use and go home with today so like i said it's very important to try to expand your appetite one thing that you need to make sure you do is healthily expand it so i did force feed and i think it's okay to force feed i'm not a nutritionist but here i am standing and i'm fine i did my research and they said it's fine as long as you do it in a gradual way you can't just try to do it in one week you know i didn't do it in one week i didn't like a month but you should do it over like six months to expand your appetite realistically so if you do it healthily which is in that way you should be fine so i think focus on expanding your appetite before just counting your calories i think it's more important to keep eating a little bit after you're full or eat faster so that your brain doesn't register that you're full until after that's something i did i was a very slow eater so it was hard for me to eat after i was full so i started trying to eat faster so that I, my brain wouldn't know i was full until i was already the plate is clear you know i'm still a slow eater so like that was something that i went back to just because i feel like eating fast is not a good quality to have and it's not a quality i wanted to have so after i did that i decided you know what i'm just gonna go back to eating slower and i don't think that transition was too hard if you're naturally a slow eater i think you can easily go back to slow eating at least at least i did so you don't try it so cut out cardio like i said i stopped going to the gym you don't want to keep going to the gym and working off everything that you're putting into your body to maintain and stay in your body so try not to do cardio if you want to go to the gym you can lift weights you can build muscle do muscle building activities but try not to do as much cardio and just do your research on what exactly will help you lose weight at the gym and what will help you gain muscle at the gym and try to focus on the gain muscle 
activities and exercises like i said you need to understand you're going to gain weight in places that are more unfavorable for what you want or what you see in the media but mostly for what you want that's who you should do it for so it might be unfavorable to have back fat for you you might be really insecure about having face fat or your arms are bigger just understand that if you want to gain weight that's what comes with it you know nothing is perfect so you need to be okay with that so if you gain all this weight and you're like i'm still insecure with my body well the biggest tip that i can say throughout this entire video is that you have to do it for yourself i mentioned it a couple times throughout the video but you really have to do it for yourself this is the only way it works girls with straight hair want to have curly hair girls with curly hair want to have straight hair i feel like girls that are oversized want to be skinny girls that are skinny want to be oversized it's just what it is so you have to do it for you because standards change all the time in the media so what was it the early 90s it was really popular to be extremely skinny like supermodels were giving off this narrative that it's extremely attractive to be skinny then kim kardashian comes it's extremely attractive to have a big butt and kim kardashian starts taking out her implants standards are changing all the time all the time so you need to do it for you what makes you feel comfortable what makes you feel confident not what the media is trying to show you you should have if you want to be beautiful you have to believe in yourself that you are beautiful in whatever state you're in and that's the first step in order to be on your confidence journey in your body and always try to be in a good state of mind while you're in these journeys i feel like whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight it's important to be in a good state of mind because for me i was trying to gain weight and when i'm depressed i lose weight so you need to make sure you're in that good state of mind and i feel like everything's connected so i work on my mind and then i'm already naturally more confident in the body that i already have and i'm just working on emphasizing certain things in my body or i'm believing in myself more and i have more confidence in myself that i can change the narrative and that i'm in control of my own body okay so i think it's important to make sure your mental is fine before you start trying to change yourself for the the worst reason you should change yourself because you want to feel more confident in how you look period again just try not to compare yourself to other people especially social media people they're trying to give out their best they're trying to show you their best they're not going to show you their worst most people are not so make sure you're not comparing yourself to people they could be using photoshop and making stuff look like what it ain't so just try not to compare yourself be really very realistic with yourself and the last tip i have is if you're young because i was young and i know many other people felt the same way when you're young you're still developing don't try to force yourself to have a certain body. If you see your friends are developing like this and they're getting this and you're not. And da, da, da. Don't try to change yourself. You're young. You're still developing. Give yourself that time. You want to make sure that you understand that you're still young and you still have time to develop. I'm not fully developed. You know, they talk about this grown woman body. I'm <laughs> Okay, they say when you turn 25, you get another little spurt of growth, you know. So I'm ready for that. And I'm enjoying the journey as I'm developing and just learning more about myself. And if you're young, that's what you should be doing. Try not to compare yourself to other people and older people and people your age that have all this that you don't have that you want. Try to enjoy the journey. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. If you liked this video, also make sure to put in the comments if you want to see more from me, more talking, giving advice. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Later.